Mark, in this project, uh, I've got a client who wanted a, a, a countertop high desk area to work on at his office. He gets tired of sitting and his legs hurt, so he wants to be able to stand up, put his computer on it and work and write. And, um, but the, the only spot he has in his office is this corner, and he's got a closet door here. So uh, he didn't want it on wheels or just four legs. And, one of the other departments would end up robbing it from him or scratching the floor, sliding it around. He wanted something mounted to the wall. So um, I'm going to come up with something that will mount to this wall and just fold down out of, out of his way and, uh, and still look good. And then when he wants it, it just folds up, clicks in place. Well, let's get to the barn and get started. Well, these are the lumber I'm going to start with. These pieces here are leftover scraps from another project. It's red oak. And I've got one cant out of my rack. I'm going to bring it over to the sawmill and make two cuts. All of these, um, I'm going to have to rip that one, but it's too short to put in the sawmill, so I'm just going to rip it with the vertical band saw. Well, let's get over to the sawmill. All right, now that we've got it all rough cut, I'm going to take two sides of it that are square to one another and uh, are right angles to one another. We'll run it through the joiner to make it perfectly straight and perfectly square, and then we'll rip it through the bandsaw. All well, that was fast. We got it all squared up. I set up a rip fence here on my bandsaw and we'll get it ripped down to an inch and a quarter and run it through the joiner and the planer again. Well, I've culled through and got my best boards. Next, we'll run them through the planer. And these are my leftover scraps that I'll probably build uh, something else out of in the future. Seems like I'm always building something out of scraps from something before. And the saw <coughs> shavings from the joiner I'm going to use in my chicken brooder. I am incubating some eggs. <laughs> Well, we got it all run through the planer now. I cut my boards uh, six inches longer than I need, and then I cut three inches off each side, and I save those pieces. And in order to get it to look like it's two inches thick and still have end grain, I take those pieces and I'll glue them down. Since this side, <clears throat> this table, you're only going to see two sides. Uh, the other two won't be seen. I'm not going to worry with keeping the grain matching. Next, I picked out the best side of the board to be the top. You always want to work uh, top side up. And uh, I squared it up and I'm drawing some lines for my biscuit joiner. Biscuit joiner will hold all your tops, everything flush and make a strong connection. Years ago, I used a, uh, I would use dowels but uh, they're cumbersome, they're kind of difficult to get perfect and the biscuit joiner is way easier. Well, next we'll get it glued up. Got it clamped. I'll let the glue dry about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll go off and do something else, work in a garden, and come back and glue another one. And after an hour or so, we'll have it. Well, I got it all clamped up. It's getting late. I'm going to let it dry overnight and finish it tomorrow. Glue's dried overnight. Um, to remove the excess glue that spilled through, I'm just going to take my chisel. It's good and sharp. 
and the flat side down, the bevel side up, and I want to just slide it along at, a, at an angle. I don't want to go straight. Just kind of come like this, and it will just peel that excess glue off. And after we get it, it all removed, we'll take the belt sander. And the belt sander, you want to put it on its slowest setting and use the finest grit you can, 220. If you, uh, if you put it wide open, um, it has a tendency to gouge into the wood when you're moving it. And then you've got a problem trying to fix that. Now these are the brackets I'm going to use and they simply fold up against the wall. <clears throat> I'm going to have to mount this board in line with that screw hole and the same here. And I wanted to give it that two inch look. So I'm going to glue that and clamp it. And I am incubating some eggs in the back. That's what that light is. And three of them have hatched this morning. I'll do another video on uh, hatching of the eggs there too. And I'll put a link to these brackets as well. Next I'm going to use a pre-conditioner for, for our wood stain. You get about a two hour window uh, before you have to stain it after using this and it's pretty simple it's a clear liquid and you just wipe it on well next I'm using a classic stain from Minwax 271 and I will give it two coats I'm gonna wait a couple hours between each coat Now that the stain is dried for eight hours, we can. I'm going to put a coat of polyurethane on it. It's for floors. I'm using a natural bristle brush. I'll give it two coats. And if you uh, <clears throat> do the second coat within 12 hours, uh, you don't have to sand it. Next, we'll mount the bracket. And I have to pre-drill the holes because it's oak. And before you put a screw in oak, something that will be removed later, put a little wax on the screw threads. It makes it easier to come apart later. Well, next, let's get it installed. Well, that's the finished product. Jeremy seems happy with it. And we still getting a little more there you go, that was quick. It folds down against the wall and he can open the closet when they need supplies. And can go ahead and lift it back up and let it lock in place. So he's not stuck sitting at his desk all day with the Jimmy legs. But we'll see y'all on our next project. We appreciate y'all watching. Thanks.